Join me inside the cabin of the 2020 Mercedes AMG E63 S wagon. A wagon. One of the most practical vehicles you can buy. This one just happens to have 603 horsepower and will embarrass most sports cars to 60 miles an hour. But those two things seem at odds with one another, performance and practicality. So in today's review, we've got to find out if Mercedes-AMG got the recipe right, or is it too much of one or the other thing? That's today. And there it is, the 2020 Mercedes-AMG E63 S wagon. Throw 4Matic Plus in there somewhere and never remember where it goes. This one is painted steel blue. It's a non-metallic color that you do have to pay $7,500 extra for. It's a lot of money, but it might just be worth it. I think this paint is gorgeous, especially with some good sunlight on it. And before we get too deep into the exterior, interior, and driving dynamics for this car, a couple quick announcements. If you have not subscribed to the channel yet, please do so and hit the bell to get notified don't want to miss the updates for the daily videos I have for you, including POV day drives, POV night drives, walk-arounds, live Q&As, and reviews, all of which I've done for this car as well. So if you want to dive right into those videos, I'm not going to hold you up, but you may want to stick around to learn all of the information, the data for this car before you go experience it via those videos. And if you like what I'm doing on this channel, you want to support me, I really appreciate it. You can do it a couple different ways. I've got merchandise like this miles per hour t-shirt I'm wearing. You don't have to get it in this color. You can get it in any color you want. I've got face masks now if you want to do your civic duty. Stop the spread of COVID-19 while also wearing the miles per hour brand. That's cool too. And then I've got a Patreon account with some perks for you and the knowledge, of course, that you are helping this channel out. And with all that out of the way, let's jump back into the 2020 E63S wagon. Now I say 2020 and note that for 2021, this car gets a mild facelift and you'll really be able to spot the differences here at the front between 2020 as we have and 2021 because the 2020 has a more modest fascia with this two slat grille, this centerpiece coming right across and sort of now last gen LED headlights on the car, but the 2021 swaps this for a larger, more in your face Panamericana grille with the horizontal, sorry, vertical slats across the front and an even larger TriStar. So this is big. The new TriStar, even bigger. Makes my hand seem small. And so, I mean, I like the Panamericana for the new AMG vehicles. You've seen it on the cars I've reviewed recently, like the GLE and the GLS, but I prefer this, the more toned down, more classic front face. And I mentioned for 2021, the headlights are updated as well. So a little more slim line on the newer car, but these don't look bad at all. LED daytime running lights, and this one has the optional LED lighting package, so it gets LED projector lights that are adaptive. They work superbly at night. Intakes on the chin of the car, and then an intake front dam. This car has a number of options, like almost $50,000 in options, so I will do my best to rattle them all off as I go around the car, outside and in, but if I miss them, just know it's really hard to keep up. One of the options is this AMG carbon fiber package around the car, so you'll see various elements like this front splitter that are in carbon fiber, but this car also has the AMG night package, so you're gonna see black gloss elements throughout the car as well. So normally if it was just the night package, this would be black, but because it has a carbon fiber on top of that, it is carbon fiber. And it looks pretty darn good. There's a close up on that pink color as well. Also a big fan of that. Yeah. 
And as we work our way to the side, we're going to see a couple things. One, these optional 20 inch matte black forged alloy wheels that go very nicely with this steel blue paint color. And they would also go really well if the car was white. Perhaps on some other paint colors wouldn't be my first choice, but here I'm a fan. And they've got this metal finish around the wheel, matte black inside. And then some bling from the AMG TriStar there. They're wrapped in Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires, kind of the latest and greatest in summer performance tires. You'll also note in here, how could you miss it, the carbon ceramic brakes. Those aren't standard, my friends. Those are almost $9,000 extra. And apart from looking really good, especially with this blue, the bronze and blue is a nice combo. They also have both aesthetic and performance advantages. Performance advantage, they're not gonna heat up as much as steel brakes, so you have that confident performance throughout your day, most likely at the track. And the aesthetic advantage is that they don't create as much brake dust. So you're not having to clean off your wheels as often. I have driven this car quite a bit, and so I have some a thin line of dust around the whole car, sorry about that, but not a whole lot from these brakes. And those are size 20 inches. Sorry if I didn't mention that. More carbon fiber elements, part of the package, include this little accent just above the V8 by Turbo 4 Matic Plus badge, signifying that this is a by Turbo, aka twin turbo V8. Carbon fiber mirror caps, high gloss look and feel to those. Down below, this trim piece also in carbon fiber. You can see the panoramic sunroof from here. Roof rails in black. And note that it's not a black roof. It is this steel blue paint color going across even to the spoiler off the roof. Only black from the glass. And also the AMG night package means that the window trim is not a reflective chrome. We've got the black gloss there instead. And I almost wish that the door handles matched that as part of the AMG night package. If it was all black and carbon fiber, it would be more cohesive, but these kind of stand out. They're not the only chrome pieces. We've got chrome from the wheels, but they stand out a bit too much for my liking. Profile is great. So good. It's a wagon. It looks like a practical choice, but only those in the know would know that it has 603 horsepower and it will absolutely obliterate most cars from a dig. Loving that profile. Coming to the back. The rear three quarter is a nice look. Things are, it's a wagon, gonna start to get chunky back here. So some big overhang after that rear axle. But the window tapers nicely, the roof tapers nicely. And I mentioned this roof mounted spoiler. It's not, it's not that big, not overly aggressive like some of these cars. Again, reemphasizing the sleeper commuter styling of the car. It's not all about being in your face. The rear, probably not my favorite look of the car. It doesn't have too much to draw the eye. It just sort of, you know, flump flumps off the back there. The LED taillights will get a mild tweak for 2021, but this being the 2020, no changes there. E63S badges, and then this chrome strip runs across the whole tailgate. We see that on a lot of cars these days. All the designers went to design school at the same time, so they're all coming out and being like, yeah, I learned something. Let's put a chrome strip on the back. And they're all doing it. Down here, we have the AMG Performance Exhaust is now standard for all 2020 models. And that's in black and looks good. 
and those R2 exhaust pipes coming out into larger trapezoidal exhaust finishers. And we also see some more carbon fiber from that package on the diffuser. The diffuser will get a re-sculpting for 2021 as well, but here we've got 2020, so no changes there, just in carbon fiber on this particular model. And then AMG on the left flank. So all in all, a very handsome estate. I'm not sure I said that right. Is a state a saloon? Saloon, I know. In British English, it's how they refer to the sedans. Is the estates the wagons? Can't believe I don't know that. My mistake. It's a wagon, but a very handsome wagon. Still subtle, though with those carbon ceramic brakes and certain carbon fiber pieces, it gives you some hint as to what's going on under the hood. Now let's get to that interior and see how the inside treats you. And on our way in, we'll note this small indent here that signifies we've got smart key access. So you can leave the key in your pocket, pull the handle to unlock, just tab the indent to lock the doors, but open that up. And we have a very attractive cabin awaiting us. A number of options, as I mentioned, but I will point those out in contrast to the standard features. One of the options is this white contrasting both in the piping around the seats and then the stitching throughout. These multi-contour seats with massaging functionality are optional. They've got ventilation as well. Extremely comfortable though. The Nappa leather, We've got a crest embossed in the headrest, supple headrest there. This, what AMG calls Dynamica, it's Alcantara microfiber suede. Insert goes around the border of the center part of the seats. Bolsters are not overly aggressive but holds you in place nicely. A lot of adjustability to the seat itself. The adjustments are here on the door rather than being on the seat themselves. You can adjust the headrest independent from the center, the bottom, and then your thigh support, which comes out or goes back in pretty quickly. Three memory seats, and then I, sh I mentioned the ventilation and heating. And then you can actually control that right front seat by pressing this button and then adjusting it like it was your own seat. This 13 speaker Burmester sound system is standard on the car. That was one of the things I was expecting to be an option, but it is standard. Lots of leather with contrast stitching in the door, carbon fiber trim, that's an option on this car. Not just the exterior, but on the interior. And it looks great. I kind of prefer the feel of matte carbon fiber, but this high gloss has the look going for it. Brush metal pieces for the, the window switches, all automatic up down. And then you have stowing door mirrors, press that button, the mirrors fold in. Hello, Miles. Then this button down here for opening and closing the tailgate automatically. And like the other AMG vehicles I've driven recently, you can pause it halfway down or at any point or hold it to make it go all the way. We can already see, even though it's not night, in the shade here, we can see some of that ambient lighting. It is vibrant ambient lighting and so many different colors to choose from. Another standard feature in this car. So let's hop in. Close that door so we can hear the sound of that. Solid. And take a peek at what we've got throughout. So you can see excellent visibility out of this car. No giant blind spots anywhere. This B pillar can be a small nuisance if your head is right here, but 
most of the time it's not an issue at all. And this car does have the optional driver assistance package with things like adaptive cruise control with lane keeping assist, steering assistance so the car effectively drives itself. You do have to chime in with your hands on the wheel every now and then. Blind spot monitoring with rear cross traffic alert and intervention. Automatic emergency braking and speed limit information. So your safety is covered and this car gets a top safety pick plus from the IIHS. So if you've not driven a Mercedes-Benz vehicles vehicle, then you would not know. You'd look at all these stocks and you think, okay, that's nice, but where's the gear selector? It's up here on the steering wheel. So you have to pull up for reverse, down for drive, and press that button P for park. I mentioned the emotion start and let's see if I can do it while holding one paddle camera. So you hold in the paddle and you press the start stop button at the same time. And we see we get a bit of extra rev there. That was awkward to do, but I did it. Now here's one thing that I wasn't immediately thinking about, but then I got a great question in the live Q&A for this car, asking about the steering wheel, what I thought about it. Now the steering wheel on this car is optional, having it suited this way with the Alcantara on the outsides, the leather on the center, the center marker. But they added some things for 2020, like this dial for your drive mode selection, and then this off to the left with your buttons for turn, opening the exhaust valves or adjusting the suspension. And those are all great and useful functions, but they clutter up the steering wheel. And so the question was, do I like how this looks? And the straight answer is no, not really. If we can kind of visually remove these pieces here, steering wheel looks good, but adding them in, especially this one with its somewhat awkward shape, distracts me just a touch. I actually don't mind the dial. The dial itself is fine and it has different graphics as you go through the drive mode. So I, I think that one's pretty cool. This one just is in the way. And you can do both of these things right here on this center console as well, exhaust and suspension. So I think that the steering wheel at least lose this tab here. I think it would look better. I get it symmetry, but it just, it's not symmetry anyway, because this looks different than this. Small rant there, but getting back to the steering wheel, this metal look finish, probably plastic, but it looks high quality um, for this center piece of the steering wheel. Good size paddles, not that big, but you can feel them engage. And I prefer that to some of those that don't have a lot of travel in the paddle. You don't know if you're actually getting the, the down gear or not, unless you're looking up and it's, the gear is changing. <laughs> Uh, so we have these smart response controls that the left one controls the display in front of me, and they're both 12.3 inch displays, and they sandwich together for what AMG or Mercedes-Benz calls a surfboard. I think it looks very good. High resolution graphics here. And one thing to note is 2020 is still using the command system, the last generation of Mercedes-Benz infotainment while 2021 gets the MBUX system. I much, much prefer MBUX to command. Command is confusing and redundant and has all these kind of little glitches that I've experienced, but MBUX does not, much more intuitive. So I think that, that alone might push me into the 2021 model, but just something to note. So I mentioned the left controller controls this one, the right one controls that display over there. They work 90% of the time, but if you have, if your hands are a little sweaty or clammy or anything, they just won't respond. So you end up wishing you had an actual toggle or something. But again, they work 90% of the time. And if they don't work, then you go and use this. This one controlling that, well, if they don't work, you gotta wait or dry off your hand or whatever you need to do. But uh, yeah, so you got some other controls. You got the uh, cruise control over there, different settings for your um, cruise control all throughout here. And then this one button takes you back to the home. So that is the one physical button you do have here. And you can see that we've got trip information scrolling through that. Pressing back, we've got an AMG performance 
module shows your boost pressure for that twin turbo system, horsepower, pound-feet of torque, oil temp, oil level, all of your drive settings, and then a G meter, and that's kind of it for your AMG performance. Your driving assistance features, service schedule, navigation, radio information, media, phone, and your head-up display, which is an option on this car. It's of good size and adds some useful information, but I don't know if I would spend the extra money on it personally. Then one more over. Back. See, as I'm using it, it's not wanting to work exactly how I would like it to work. Hit the designs and you can adjust whether you want the classic displays we have here, sport, which gives you a more like tunnel vision look. And again, the MBUX system for 2021 has more versatility here and I would prefer it. And then progressive. Progressive looks a lot like sport, just blue. So I stick with classic most of the time, which funny enough, classic looks just like sport does in the MBUX system. Getting a bit ranty here, sorry about that. Now over to the infotainment side, you can control it via this dial here and this touch sensitive thing just above that. They work, again, most of the time. A lot of the stuff works most of the time, but the menu structure is a bit confusing. Energizing comfort. That is an option on this car, and it basically means you've got fragrance. Fragrance and modes that work based on kind of like what you're looking for. Refresh will blow a lot of AC at you and pump a different perfume smell. smell. Warmth, you heat yourself up, different perfume smell, vitality, different perfume smell, and all of these will change the ambient lighting in the car. So I would leave that alone, not something I would spend the extra 500 something dollars on. Dynamic select, here's where you can go in and calibrate your individual mode. So of all the drive modes, you've got a number of them and I'll go through them here. I never know how to work this thing. It, I, intuitively, it, it makes a lot of sense. Crank right, crank left, but for me, I always crank the opposite direction of what I wanna go. So individual mode will let you choose different settings and then have them all pull up at one time. So your drive mode, you can have that be, I set it to dynamic. Transmission, D or M, standard drive or manual. Suspension is your air suspension. The air suspension system is standard on this car. Comfort Sport and Sport Plus, would not recommend Sport Plus. Pretty aggressive. Exhaust, do you want normal or balanced, sorry, or powerful, louder, open up the baffles. ESP, some other automakers call it ESC, Electronic Stability Control. This is Electronic Stability Program. I put that in Sport, allowing a bit of slip there. So you can calibrate that, and then when you go to Individual, it'll pull up all of those settings and have those ready for you. We also have a Slippery Mode. That's a new one for 2020 for wet weather. Comfort. Sport. Which Sport is... It's very much on the light end of things. Sport Plus, if you really want a sporty driving experience, this is the one I would go for. Race is pretty aggressive, will automatically turn off, or not completely, we'll put it in ESP Sport. And this is where if you wanna go into launch mode, you go to this, then you put your foot on the brake while tapping the accelerator and then letting go of the brake, that'll get you going. And now, if I wanna show you how to get into drift mode, there's that hidden mode. So if you're in race mode, you put the transmission into manual, you hold the electronic stability program until it goes off. Then, and this is gonna be difficult again while I'm holding it, you hold in these two paddles at one time, and then it'll give you this menu, drift mode, confirm up. So I paddle up, and now drift mode is active. If I wanna disengage drift mode, Drift mode, I will explain the driving experience, just makes it a rear wheel drive car. If I want to disengage that, I can just 
undo any of the settings that are required for drift mode. So if I take it out of manual, drift mode has been canceled. Put the traction control back in normal and take it out of race mode. And you notice when we get to Sport Plus, that's when it opens up the exhaust automatically. You can always just press that button or this one here and it will open up the exhaust in any mode. Let's see, I just, I don't know why it doesn't make sense to me. Suspension, if you want to control that there or here, a couple different settings for suspension. Your drive modes, you could do the dial, you can do it here. Redundancy, that's the name of the game here with AMG vehicles. You can control them here, working through the different modes, and each mode shows you what they're changing. Enough about that. We see more of this carbon fiber all across the dashboard with these circular vents that are pulled straight out of the S-Class. Looking really good. Like the white contrast stitching on this leather piece up here on the dash. So yeah, all of these soft touch materials, leather, genuine leather. And then the carbon fiber comes all the way down and we have this cover piece which has AMG on it. The high gloss looks high quality. You open that up and you reveal a wireless smartphone charging spot. This is where you plug in for Apple CarPlay. Yes, it does have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Here is your key with AMG on the bottom, piano black there, piano black with crest, medium weight key, not ultra heavy, and cup holders. And you know, those are decent sized cup holders. I wonder if would they fit my large water bottle? For the large water bottle test? Let's see, I know they fit in other AMG vehicles, but no, that's, that's not gonna work there. Door pocket. Yes, it fits in the door pocket. That is a win for the AMG E63S wagon in the center console. Doesn't really belong in there, but yeah, that works. A couple of wins. So it passes the large water bottle test, very important. It also has this netting piece here, which I guess would be a one-time work fix. You could grab it and then having to put it back in the netting might get annoying after a while. But yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna leave that. So yes, it passes the large water bottle test. Going back into the infotainment, I've got a lot more to show you here. Not gonna spend too much time, but there is a track pace setting. This will take a minute. While we're doing that, let's look up here at the rearview mirror. Pretty standard looking rearview mirror with cheapy plastic. This is one of the cheapier elements of this car. You can really feel the harshness of that cheap plastic. You do have a spot for your sunglasses in here. And then a pair of moonroof, sunroofs rather. Moonroof would be the rear because it doesn't open. Sun would be the front, I suppose. But yeah, instead of doing full pano without this piece there, they broke them up into two. And you can also see optional on this car is this Alcantara AMG Dynamico, whatever you want to call it, headliner, microfiber suede. And then the sun visors, we will note one, I don't know why, but all AMG vehicles, Mercedes-Benz vehicles do. I have to, it worth so much to get that right. And I, I realize forcing something usually means you're not doing it right, but I've tried it so many different ways, it never works. But they slide. So that's good. Nice leather covers for these grab handles. It's just the details. The details are really nice on this car. Okay, so back to this because it's finally got there. You've got a few different things you can go into here. Track race. You can record your lap times. Drag race. You can record your acceleration times, your quarter mile, your braking distances, telemetry. That's just going to be a running thing showing your speed, your blips of acceleration. And options, but that's that's it. But some good information there. Your systems features, you can toggle them on and off there, your consumption. Well, speaking of consumption, this car really is thirsty. So this is after a day of driving. That's where the fuel tank is. It was at over three quarters of a tank, seven eighths when I was starting here. I haven't done that much driving today. And yeah, it guzzles. So ratings are 16 city, 22 highway, 18 combined. I wonder what I'm actually seeing. 
Yeah, 8.5? 8.5. Don't buy this car for the gas mileage. Oh, yeah, it's not touch responsive, by the way. So I forgot that, tried to touch it. You have to use the controller. That's a difference for MBUX. You don't have to, you can touch it. Light settings, here are all of your ambient lighting adjustments. You can, how intense do you want the light? And then all of the different colors. You can do a multicolor setup or you can do the individual lights and just go ham on this light spectrum. But pretty cool, looks great at night. I'll show you a clip from the PV Night Drive for sure. So that's all in the vehicle. Navigation improved with the MBUX system. So we're just kind of working with what we have here, but pretty high resolution, no real complaints here. Navigation system is good. So yeah, command, it works. I prefer the MBUX system. This one, also this car, optionally has a tri-zone climate control system. So dual zone up here, and then a third for the rear passengers. We'll get to that in a second. But that's your plug-in for the Apple CarPlay, and then you have two additional plugs here and an SD card slot. So plenty of charging options, and then you have more charging back there for those passengers. Showed you all these settings here. Got your analog clock there by IWC. Looks good. Glove box, I showed you that. And now let's hop into the rear seats. So this is a family vehicle. So that means it should have space for five passengers along with all their stuff. Option on this car are these rear sunshades. Those are $380. Worth it to you? You tell me. Rear seat heating, yet another option on this car. Really high quality trim, or sorry, uh, yeah, door insert, leather up here. It's honestly a little hard to tell which of these are the Dezino customization options because this car does have $13,000 of customization done to it. And I know the white contrasting is part of that and the headliner, but I don't know what specifically in terms of the door trim are part of the customization. That wasn't itemized for me, but just know that there's 13 grand in just the Dezino options. So these rear seats, mimicking the style of the front seats with the microfiber suede on the centerpiece borders, leather there, leather on the outside. These seats, you cannot adjust the recline of them. One thing to note, armrest comes down, got a cubby in there, and then cup holders for your left and right passenger. Stay. Now getting inside, that is my driving position at six feet tall. And you can see that I've got plenty of knee room, no problems there. The foot pocket's a touch narrow, so I can't slide my feet as far, as far forward as I would like. But, you know, it's workable. I think the foot pocket thing would really improve rear seat uh, feeling of space because I can't adjust the knee angle as much as I would like. Still good. Down here, you can see the third zone of climate control here. Adjust the fan speed, the temperature, then press this button here. And you've got a 115 volt socket. That's an option. And then your DC plug there. Looking at the front cabin from back here. It is handsome, indeed. Your panoramic roof. That's, is that still panoramic if it's actually just two glass pa panels? You tell me, what do you think? Let me know in the comments. Is that a genuine panoramic roof? More of that leather on the grab handle here along with the reading lights. More of that microfiber suede for the headliner. Got a hook for your clothes. Air vents over here. Pocket behind each of these seats. And let's go look at the trunk. So 
So the tailgate opens really tall, so it's not in your way. One of the biggest issues I have with some of these cars is, especially the wagons, is the tailgate won't go up that high. So I end up bonking my head every time when I go to put something in the back or take something out. This one, not an issue. No problems. Six feet tall again, not really an issue. One thing I didn't show you, that I'm gonna jump back in real quick just to show you, is headroom in the rear seats. So I showed you legroom, headroom, no issues. Not a problem, good amount of headroom in this car. So 35 cubic feet of space behind that second row if it's up, if you fold it down, which you can do so by pulling a button on either side. Pop goes the weasel. Now you have 64 cubic feet of space. And of course, the difference between a wagon and an SUV is that the SUV has the height working in its advantage. This one, you have all the length you need. If you could fold that front passenger seat forward, guarantee you can fit a short board, surfboard, no problem. Maybe even a shorter long board in there. But bikes will not be an issue. Wagon is practical. You do have a cargo cover. Can stow there, or I think it angles up. I don't know how to do it. I'm struggling. Okay, it angles up and slides up there for a two position. I just can't figure it out. Netting holder back here, hooks under here. We have, well, they gave you a cargo bin and then there's additional storage, not, not much of it. And no real place to store that cargo cover like you can in some SUVs. That is one negative. But as far as general cargo space is concerned, this one passes the test for sure. And you not only have the close button here, but you can have the close and lock the press of button. flat, completely flat rear seats. Very important, very useful. And I think that's gonna do it for the interior of the Mercedes-AMG E63S. Now it's time to go drive. say fine. I'll let you have it. Yeah, the performance is good. The performance is very good. We can think a couple things here. A four liter bi-turbo twin, twin turbo V8, making 603 horsepower and 627 pound-feet of torque. That is connected to a nine-speed multi-clutch automatic gearbox and all-wheel drive semi-permanent all-wheel drive because you can have it in all-wheel drive in all modes except for if you engage drift mode. But while we're at a stoplight, let's try launch control. That sounds fun. Angry. Makes me feel angry with the car. Like, like we together are upset about things being in front of us. We want to get to those things faster. So we accelerate harder. Zero to 60. 3.2 seconds says Mercedes AMG. Car and driver says, yeah, we could, uh, we could do faster. How about three seconds flat? That's bonkers. That is definitely supercar territory. Top speed, also 
high up there. I don't know if most supercars are faster than this, but 180 miles an hour. 180 miles an hour. This is a wild time that we live in, folks, that this car, a wagon, can do these things and do them well. So it isn't just the straight line speed. It isn't just the noise of that performance exhaust that is now standard for 2020. It is the way it goes around a corner because that all wheel drive system, you can play with it a little bit. If you go into electronic stability control or electronic stability program, they call it sport mode, then it will allow a little bit of slip to the rear, but keep you from becoming smashy keep you from losing it and I like that mode that mode's good because I don't want to pay a hundred and what did I say hundred and sixty thousand for this car yeah I don't want to pay that much money I'd rather keep it all clean keep shiny side up and so the all-wheel drive system with that electronic locking rear differential is really intuitive it knows what to do how to put the power down most importantly how to keep you from damaging yourself and the car while still having a good time. Now I do have one small criticism in terms of the driving experience and it's not the brakes. The brakes are very good because this one has carbon ceramics and the only downside of those is that they do like to squeal sometimes at stoplights. It's okay, press on them harder rub off that aggressive part and maybe they won't squeal next time but no the criticism is not the brakes the steering feels a touch artificial it communicates the limits of grip but only just so I want more feedback I want more engagement through the steering wheel and I don't feel like I get it necessarily bums me out because I want to connect with this car more. It's not awful, but it could be better. Let's put it that way. The other criticism comes when you want to turn the dial and stop being, I always turn this dial wrong. I never remember. I turn it the wrong direction when I'm trying to go the other way. When you want it to be the perfect commuter, the comfort car, the luxury vehicle that it also promises it is. Because from just about every element, of uh, just about every category of luxury, the noise, the cabin noise is very low. I'm doing 65 miles an hour. I'm doing freeway speeds right now. And there's a tiny bit of wind noise, a tiny bit of road noise, but nothing bad at all. I'm going to thank that acoustic comfort package for some of that. But I think just the general engineering of this vehicle's cabin is such that it's, it's going to be very nice. And the suspension is good over most things but then there are those few times when you go over something like a series of road markers or a speed bump or if you're on a road with construction happening we go for a harsh bump and the suspension just kind of fails in those moments it just fails at keeping you completely at ease because it transmits the roughness of whatever that bump is to your bottom and that's not fun. That's not fun when you're driving a $160,000 luxury wagon. You don't want that. And that's what I'm hoping that those 2021 changes address primarily. We know the suspension tweaks are coming. If they soften it up in those times, then this car is as close to perfection as I can think of. Seriously. It looks good. It hauls absolutely hauls in all environments but we have to talk about competition and this is a weird category here because there isn't really a direct competitor right now when that Audi R6 Avant comes this later this year or beginning of next that will be a direct rival. It will be an all-wheel drive vehicle. It'll have 591 horsepower. It'll do zero to 60 in a little over three seconds. It will be the direct rival to this car. But until that car comes, what we have is really 
not exactly direct. We have the Porsche Panamera Turbo Sport Turismo. My goodness, I forgot the, a lot of names here. Both this car and that Porsche have lots of names. That car at 155,000 to start, more expensive, doesn't have the cargo capacity of this car. The zero to 60 time is about even, 3.2 seconds. Power is pretty close, 550 for that one. It's not 603, it's a little less. I'm sure it won't make as good a noise as this. I've actually, I've actually, I've driven it. I know it doesn't make as good a noise as, as this. But that car, it's, you know, it, it kind of competes because there isn't really anything else. But the Audi R6 Avant, that will be the direct rival. I still think the Mercedes AMG E63S wagon doesn't have much to worry about when considering those cars. It's that good that, that someone would really have to come on and rewrite the rule book for this car to be truly unseated. That Audi R6 Avant looks fantastic. It won't have a rear wheel drive mode. And that I think is the kicker for me. The fact that you can turn off all the systems, you can make a rear wheel drive, you can do stupid things like drifts and burnouts. Can I get a drift mode? Yes, you can. Still drifting, nice. So this is now I think my favorite Mercedes AMG vehicle on sale. I've driven a quite a few of them. That GLS 63 kind of just shocked me so much that I loved it, and I still love it, but it's still an SUV. This is a wagon, which just the enthusiast in me is thrilled, and the practical side of me also loves it, and then the performance elements are that good, so I just, I don't really have complaints apart from those few that I've shared. So it's my favorite Mercedes AMG vehicle. It's one of my favorite cars on sale, full stop. And I think if you can keep it around 120, 130, then it's a heck of a car. An extra 50 grand in options is too much. But keep it around 120, this is, this is a wonderful vehicle. And I am enjoying every minute behind buddy.